The first 100,000-ton tanker-sized mobile fish farm in China is now operational, the size of a football field. This mobile farm can generate up to 100,000 tons of fish annually. The farm is mobile so that it may be moved to various locations for an optimal fishing environment. This new concept of fish farming on wheels is an effort to increase China's fish harvest in order to meet the demands of an increasing population. The farm is designed in such a manner that it can be towed by a tugboat and relocated to the finest fishing areas. The farm will have over a million tilapia, carp, and catfish fingerlings in it, and it is estimated to yield over 4,000 tons of fish annually. The farm is located in the Bohai Sea and will be used to raise fish as well as other aquatic creatures. The farm has many tanks that can store up to 10,000 tons of water in each. Fish will also be gutted and filleted at a farm-based processing plant. Both the Chinese government and a group of private enterprises collaborated in the construction of this mobile fish farm. The facility is meant to contribute to an increase in China's seafood output. The farm is named Guajin 1 and will catch 3,700 tons of fish each year. The company is running the ship, named Qingdao Guajin Development Group, has already laid plans to construct four more ships after testing some of its ideas on a smaller vessel with the long-term goals of creating a fleet of 50 floating mobile fish farms, which is very amazing. In December 2020, the Qingdao Bay High Shipbuilding Industry of China State Shipbuilding Corporation began constructing the first vessel, Guozhin-1. The ship is 816 feet long and has 15 pools double size of standard pools. The total tank space is close to 900,000 square feet or more than 19 acres. Sound and vibration control were two major issues that needed to be addressed throughout the ship's construction. The vessel's speed and propulsion type were not specified. Sea trials for the Guozhin-1 were conducted from April 30th to May 5th, 2022, after the vessel left the shipyard in January. According to CSSC, it was delivered ahead of schedule, and a naming ceremony was held for it on May 20th. The company has sought and been granted over 10 design element authorizations and filed for over 40 patents overall, one of which is worldwide which means that these farms are the future when it comes to fish farming because once they're successful, these designs will be used worldwide. How does this farm work and what are the benefits? The system's fundamental component is a continuous flow of water from the sea into the ship's tanks, creating a contained and manageable aquatic environment inside the ship. By keeping the fish in a tank, they can protect them from things like red tide, typhoons, and pollutants. In order to keep an eye on the fish, the ship is equipped with cameras, sensors, and an automatic feeding system that can send data back to the company's headquarters on land. They believe that by using their newly designed cages, they may boost breeding density by a factor of 3 to 5 compared to conventional cages, and thereby reduce aquaculture cycle durations by as much as 25%. They also anticipate a rise in fish weight growth and an enhancement in the fish's ability to survive. They will be concentrating on what they call high-quality farmed fish, such as yellow croaker, Atlantic salmon, and grouper. According to reports, the delivery of two similar ships, Guozhin-2 and Guozhin-3, is scheduled for March 2024. The Guozhin-1 fish farm is only one of several such facilities that have sprung up in China in recent years. Aquaculture has grown at a fast rate, which has helped to supply the rising demand for seafood in China. It has also helped the country's economy grow. China's influence on the international economy as the world's second biggest has been substantial, but the country's economy has slowed in recent years. As a result, the Chinese government has enacted a number of policies meant to boost economic activity. The China Guozhin-1 program, which seeks to increase domestic consumption and decrease reliance on exports, is one of the most significant reform initiatives. When it comes to farmed fish, more than two-thirds of the world's total comes from China. For decades, the country's aquaculture business has been expanding fast and this trend has not slowed down. China relies heavily on fish aquaculture for both economic 
and nutritional reasons. As a result, the expanding population can get their hands on some protein and people may find work in the countryside. China fish farmers are exploring new methods of production in an effort to meet the rising consumer demand for seafood. They are using cutting-edge methods to maximize output while maintaining a standard setting quality at the same time. Aquatic intelligent breeding is a new kind of technology being employed in China. Water quality, feeding, and other parameters may all be optimized with the use of sensors and huge data in this system. Recirculating aquaculture systems and land-based salmon farms are two more novel technologies being tested in China. Despite drawbacks like costly initial investment, these new technologies have the potential to improve fish farming in terms of both sustainability and efficiency. These technologies are also being used in these new farms to make them more productive and efficient. A study conducted by the Beijing Normal University found that between 1980 and 2014, aquaculture expanded to cover 30% of China's coastline. This has caused ecological disruptions in wetlands. For instance, the Yellow River's Delta salt marshes have been reduced by about 80% as a result. Aquaculture, besides its many positive benefits, is a major contributor to water pollution in coastal areas due to effluent discharges and other contaminants. When governments conducted inspections after 2017, they often ordered the shutdown or revamping of many aquaculture facilities. China plans to standardize the layout of its aquaculture ponds and promote greener practices, such as water recycling and the integration of rice farming, in an effort to reduce its carbon footprint. Limits on medication residues in seafood are also included for the first time in a Chinese five-year plan for the industry. Better tracking of quality and security is facilitated by this. Environmentally friendly practices will be encouraged, effluent will be treated, drug use will be reduced, trash fish or fish too small for human consumption and often used as animal feed will be replaced with compound feed, and genetic stock will be improved, all according to the 2021 action plan. A 77% success rate in substituting compound feed for garbage fish in trials may inspire neighboring aquaculture facilities to give it a try. China also intends to spread its innovative and eco-friendly aquaculture practices to other countries through the United Nations South-South Cooperation Initiative, the Belt and Road Initiative, and the international fishing industry. Because they can be moved to other locations, the new fish farms will put an end to all of these issues that are associated with water pollution. Therefore, getting rid of waste will eventually become a very simple process. The 100,000-ton mobile fish farm is now completely prepared for operation. This is a significant advance for the Chinese government in the pursuit of its objective to deliver sustainable seafood to the people of China. They will be able to generate a great amount of fish using this innovative technique without causing any harm to the natural environment. This is an excellent illustration of how innovation may aid in the resolution of environmental issues. It's possible that the rest of the world may pick up some ideas from China because these farms are going to permanently alter the way aquaculture is done all around the world.